Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at motion matching in Unreal Engine 5.4. Motion matching is a really fun system where the engine picks the most appropriate animation for the trajectory the player is on. Now there is going to be a sample project released later in the year with 500 AAA motion captured animations. Now if you can't wait for that sample project or you simply just want to practice right now, I'm going to show you how to in this video. Launch Unreal Engine 5.4 Preview 1. Choose games and we're going to be using the third person template. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to motion matching and I've got starter content and ray tracing off. Once Unreal Engine starts, click on settings on the top right and then choose plugins. Up here, you want to search for trajectory. Go ahead and enable it. It is going to give you a warning because this is an experimental plugin. Then also search for pose search. Go ahead and enable this and then restart your engine. First, I'm going to show you how motion matching works with Mixamo. So head on over to Mixamo.com, click on characters and pick an appropriate character that you'd like to practice this with. I'm going to be using this SWAT guy down here. Click on this character to choose it. Yep, so this character has loaded in. Now I'm going to select animations up here and I'm going to search in the search bar over here, locomotion. Right now you can download any one of the packs. I'm going to download this pack on the upper left here. Click on this pack, download it at its default settings, and then save it to an appropriate location. I'm then going to use Mixamo Converter to convert all 13 animations in this pack into a format that we can extract root motion from. This is very important, and if you don't know what I'm talking about here, how to do this, I have a video uploaded just before this one explaining this entire process. Back in Unreal, we're going to open our content drawer, navigate to the characters folder, right click here, choose new folder, and we're gonna name this one Mixamo. Now we need a character skeleton, so I'm gonna drag this ch15 non-pbr.fbx into the folder, click on reset default, and then import all. Now while that's happening, I'm going to shift select all my animations, and our objective is to drag and drop these into a folder with the skeleton that we want to map these to, so this light blue skeleton over here. I'm gonna drag and drop this into the same folder, and you'll see the import dialog has detected the skeleton that these were animated on. So reset or default, and then import all. Once the import completes, to make sure everything works, I'm going to double click on this pink asset here, which is a skeletal mesh. And you'll see there's a drop down menu up here called preview animation. You should see all of your animations over here. Now on all of these clips, I want root motion and force root lock enabled. Now you can do this one by one, or you can shift select all your clips, go to asset actions and edit selection in property matrix. Think of this as a spreadsheet where you can set attributes on similar assets all in one go. Now I'm gonna search root here, Shift select all of these animation clips and enable root motion and force root lock. Next, we're going to set up our character blueprint. So I'm going to go over to my content folder, right click, choose blueprint class and select character. Always a good idea to prefix a blueprint with BP underscore. So I'm gonna name this BP underscore make some more character and then double click to open it. On the left here, select mesh under components and set the skeletal mesh asset to the one that you downloaded from Mixamo. So in my case, CH15 non-PBR. We're going to rotate this negative 90 on the Z and I'm just going to move it up slightly. So negative 87 on the Z here as well. Select your root, click on the add button and type in spring arm. This is going to be the component we attach our camera to. Select spring arm, click on add again and type in camera and then add a camera component as a child of your spring arm. With the spring arm selected, I'm going to offset this 80 on the Z and 50 on the Y. I also want this rotated slightly downward. So we're going to select our camera and in the Y, we're going to move it slightly lower like this. Let's drag and drop our blueprint into the environment to see what our camera looks like. So you can see bottom right, I'm getting a preview over here. To get our Mixamo character blueprint to respond to player input, we have to set up an input system. Now, if you worked with Unreal before, you probably already know how to do this. If you don't, open your third person character blueprint, control C, and then open our Mixamo character blueprint, delete the three red nodes that comes with any blueprint that gets created, and control V. This is going to set up and activate enhanced input for you. Under world settings, you want to look for game mode override. Now we want to find where this game mode lives in our project. So I'm going to click on this folder icon over here. Double click to open this and we want to change our default pawn class from the BP third person character to the Mixamo character that we created. So you can either drag and drop this here or click on this drop down menu and select BP Mixamo character. Now when you press play, our Mixamo character blueprint gets spawned and this blueprint responds to all the key presses you get with the third person template. Now that our Mixamo character blueprint is responding to player input, let's set up motion matching. I'm going to right click and make a new folder here, call it motion matching, double click to open this folder. Once again, right click, go to animation, 
motion matching, and pose search schema. Select the skeleton you downloaded from Mixamo, and I'm just gonna name this PSS underscore Mixamo. Inside the schema, you'll find a number of settings that lets you control how the engine decides what animation gets picked. Now what I like to do here is just click on this foot L, foot R, just make sure it's found the skeleton, found the bone it's looking for, click save and then close this. In the same folder, right click, choose animation, motion matching and post search database. It's going to ask you to pick a schema, select the one you just created. I'm gonna name this PSD underscore Mixamo. The database is where your montages, your blend spaces, your sequences are all going to live and then the engine picks between them. So I've just added a sequence here under selection details. You can see I can link it to any imported sequence. Once I select it, it's going to show up over here. We have the two green feet and this red and blue trajectory line underneath it. You can also, by the way, drag and drop sequences from your content browser directly into the database. This, this personally I find is much easier, like I'm doing over here. So we're just gonna drag and drop all of our sequences one by one into the database on the top left over here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the left turn and the right turn along with the jump as we don't need them for today's tutorial. Now you can shift select all your clips to get a visual representation as to what your possibilities are. Now I'm gonna select this running underscore UE and show you a problem you may have. This clip is not starting and stopping at the same point, right? So it's not gonna loop properly. Now you can see here looping is disabled. So I'm gonna double click on running underscore UE, search for loop and enable looping. I'm also gonna go ahead and enable looping on all of my clips that have looping disabled, as you can see from the interface over here. As soon as looping is enabled, it turns white. So we'll just go ahead and enable looping on the other clips as well. All right, just one more and idle underscore UE. All right, now I'll just save everything and you'll see if I click on running underscore UE, it's now starting and stopping at the same point. That stride is matching. And so it's gonna loop properly. To wrap things up, go back to your motion matching folder, right click, animation, motion matching, and post search normalization set. I'm going to name this PSNS underscore Mixamo, and then double click to open it, and then add our database to it. So our PSD underscore Mixamo, click save and you're done. What brings this all together is an animation blueprint. So we're going to go to our Mixamo folder, right click, animation, animation blueprint, and choose the skeleton that you downloaded from Mixamo. I'm going to name this APB underscore Mixamo. Navigate back to your BP underscore Mixamo character and we want to make sure our mesh is using the animation blueprint we just created. On the left here, select mesh, make sure this is set to use animation blueprint and then select APB Mixamo. Double click to open your animation blueprint and on the left here, you want to select event graph. Now from this green try get pawn owner node, we're gonna drag a pin off from the return value and type cast to BP underscore Mixamo character. What this effectively is doing is checking if the owner's class is BP underscore Mixamo character. Is the owner a BP underscore Mixamo character, right? Remember we named it like this. Now let's connect the execution for our cars to our event node. And next I want to make sure that a trajectory component and a movement component exists on our blueprint character. Open your BP underscore Mixamo character and you can see a character movement component already exists. We just need to add the trajectory component like this. Once that's been added, compile and save your blueprint. Now, because we have a trajectory component and a movement component, drag a pin from this as BP underscore Mixamo character and type get character trajectory. Do the same for your get movement component. It's usually at the end of this list over here. Once that's done, right click on both of the return nodes and select promote variable. And I'm just going to connect the character trajectory variable to my successful cast pin and do the same to my character movement. Next, double click on this anim graph on the left here and anywhere in this graph, right click and then type motion matching. Select this node over here and then first plug in your database. So the PSD underscore Mixamo that we created earlier. Next, drag a pin from this person here and type pose search. This is the node you're looking for. Connect this to your result and then right click on your trajectory and we're going to click on binding character trajectory that we created earlier and then trajectory. Click compile and you'll see it's all working now. And then finally, if you play your game, you'll see that you have motion matching completely working from a database of animations that you set up earlier. If you want to visualize and see the trajectory, you can press the tilde key and type a character trajectory debug one. 
Now, as you move around using WSAD or even the mouse, you can see the trajectory Unreal Engine is using. Now that we're done with Mixamo, you can get even more animations by clicking on Sample, click on Lyra, Start a Game, and then click on Create Project. This is first gonna download Lyra to your system. Remember, Lyra doesn't exist for 5.4 yet. So I've downloaded it for 5.3, and here I've opened the Lyra project. I'm going to navigate to the folder with the animations on it. So characters, heroes, animations, locomotion, and unarmed. That's the folders I found a whole bunch of unarmed animations in. So I'm gonna open this over here, shift select all your animations. Remember they're a green asset. Right click, asset actions, and migrate. Right, so it's gonna show you the dependency tree here. Click okay. And then you basically want to navigate to a content folder, a destination content folder, right? So I've just selected the project we created earlier, the content folder of that project. And after the migration completes, you can see all those animations now exist inside this project under the same folder structure. Now, another thing coming to 5.4 is one-click retargeting. We've actually done a video on this as well. Select all your animations, right-click and choose retarget animations. And in the window that pops up, your target skeletal mesh will be the one that you downloaded for Mixamo. So you can see on one click, it's retargeted all the animations because we did that Mixamo converter business before. I'm just gonna shift select all these animations here, export animations, and I'm gonna put it in a different folder. So Mixamo, right click, let's make a new folder here and call it transferred animations. All right, click export, export once again. And now we have all the Lyra animations retargeted to the skeleton that we downloaded from Mixamo. Now I can simply open my motion matching database, delete the existing Mixamo animations, and add the Lyra animations to this. So I'm just gonna navigate to the folder, so Mixamo, transfer animations, shift select all of them and just drag and drop them in here. Sometimes this might lead to a crash, so maybe if that's happening, do you do them one at a time or in a few sets together, right? So we're gonna go ahead and delete the turn animations, and I'm also going to go ahead and delete the crouch animations, right? We don't need them right now in this demonstration. We're just keeping it very simple, just walks and runs for now. So let's get rid of all the crouches, close this, and this looks pretty good. Let's save it. One additional thing as well is let's go to our BP underscore makes more character, select the root, and just search for orient. And I'm going to disable the orient movement, right? So that I can pull the character back and strafe. And now when I play my game, I've got the Lyra animations driving a mix of more character. We've got motion matching working really well here. We didn't set up any states. This is just a database of animations that Unreal is picking using the trajectory as kind of a guide for it. So it's a really cool system. The 5.4 sample project is on its way. It's gonna come this year at some point. While you wait on it, hopefully this video has given you some ideas. Once again, you can visualize the trajectory using the tilde key command, the console command. And you can see here, it looks pretty good. Works right out of the box. And you can keep adding more animations to this, provided that it all works with the same kind of skeleton, right? Okay, with that said, everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comments what you thought. Give us a sub, give us a like. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.